I always like it when the director in an audition says, I'd like to give you an adjustment. <laughs> Don't you love that? I'd like to give you an adjustment. What does that really mean? We're going to talk about making adjustments as an actor, not only in auditions, but when you're in rehearsal. Coming up right after this. Welcome to Casting Actors Cast. It's the podcast for actors in the business of show. Here is your host, Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Casting Actors Cast. So glad that you're here. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach, and this is the podcast for actors. And I'm so thrilled that you're here today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we're going to talk today about adjustment. What does that actually mean? And I can't wait to get into this subject because, as I've said many times in our podcast before, I get very, very excited when something sort of hits me in the head and goes, you know, that would make a good podcast. And today is just one of those podcasts. But let's just jump right into it, shall we? Oh, I'm forgetting one thing, right? This is that moment of the podcast where I say thank you so very much for tuning in to Casting Actors Cast. We're also simulcasting on YouTube. So if you want to check out, I'm slowly improving the videos on YouTube. And I think they're getting a little bit better. The quality wasn't so good in the beginning, but I promise you they're getting a little bit better and uh, almost even watchable. So <laughs> if you have a chance, please come to YouTube click subscribe and like and uh, I'd love to grow this community as I've always said this is something that I just love doing I'm not monetized I'm not trying to make money at this I'm just trying to make this a community I'm trying to lift the veil on all those mysterious things that actors think take place not only during auditions but how do you get the job how do you book the job and any of those inside tips and secrets on what it is to be an actor in the business that's what I'm here for so anyway, now we can jump right into it. Oh, I forgot one more thing. Sorry. You need to go to castingactorscast.com. Um, there you're going to find a lot of freebies. You're going to see some workshops and classes that I'm teaching. But also, more importantly, is that if you fill out that little contact fo form, it's called Jump Into the Talent Pool, then you click on that. What you're going to get is a free downloadable PDF of a book on voice acting called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voiceover workshop for professional actors. It's a book that I wrote. It's 100 pages. It's absolutely free, but its entire purpose is to help you in the voiceover world if that is something that you're interested in doing. But the comments form, you can just leave me a brief comment and I would really, really appreciate it because I thrive on feedback. So thank you so much for listening and let's jump into it now. Making an adjustment. Yikes. That can pose all kinds of interesting problems and I kind of want to dig deep today about exactly what that is when you get um, a critique, when you get the director wanting you to change something about your performance. And we're going to go step by step on the psychology of what happens to you when that happens. Plus, I hope and I hope by the end of this podcast, you're going to have a really great idea about the right approach when you're asked to adjust something in your performance so that, number one, you don't go crazy and overthink it. And number two, you understand the real purpose behind a director making that kind of suggestion or comment. All right, so let's get started. I uh, had a really great conversation with Pat. You know, Pat McCorkle star started this company in 1979. Um, well over 50 Broadway productions, 65 plus off-Broadway productions, 60 plus feature films, tons and tons of television projects. And we also do regional theater, many regional theaters throughout the country, like St. Louis Repertory Theater, uh, Pittsburgh Public Theater, uh, Barrington Stage Company. I mean, the whole, and uh, I was going to say, and George Street, I know I'm getting all flummoxed here because there's so many regional theater things that we do entire seasons for these theaters. So it never ceases to amaze me that you can tell so much by an actor's willingness to take an adjustment from a director and then incorporate it and try to make it work. Now, this can happen in an audition, but this can also happen in rehearsal. And what I mean by adjustment is, is that the director wants to give you a note. 
He wants to give you an idea to contemplate. He wants to give you a suggestion. Perhaps he wants to change something that you're doing in your performance so that it fulfills his vision, his idea of where he thinks it should go. But let's first talk about the audition. When the actor comes into audition and the director gives an adjustment, first and foremost, it's really critical that you don't take it as a criticism of your work. Let me repeat that. It's really important that you don't take that as a criticism of your work. In fact, let's think about that. Let's break it down. If the director thinks that you're on the wrong track, in a way that doesn't fit into his idea of the way he thinks it should go, then he's going to ask you to make an adjustment. Number two, sometimes a director will ask you to make an adjustment just because he wants to see if you can incorporate that adjustment into your work relatively easily. That goes to the actor's technique. Your ability to say, you know what, I think this person is really a lot more angry about the situation than what I'm seeing. So I'd love you to really get in touch with more anger here. Now the actor can take that critique and say, okay, great. I can take that. Now let me see if I what I can do to get more angry. Or the actor can say to themselves, you know, that inner dialogue that we all have, they can say to themselves, Oh, he really doesn't like what I'm doing. So now that I'm getting a criticism, I'm not sure that this is going to be the right thing for me to do. You see what happens, the difference there? One is the most important thing is that you must consider this a collaboration. That the director is there just to see if you want to make the adjustment that fits his idea. Now, it certainly is absolutely appropriate for you to say, well, you know, I appreciate that, but can I ask a question about that anger? I'm not sure because he has to still keep it together because mom is in the next room. So you see what I'm doing there? I'm giving a rationale for the actor to make their case. And the director might come back and say, you know, you're absolutely right, but still, it's touching on something much more deep, in which case you say, you know, I think let's try that. Let's see what happens there. So understand what I'm doing in terms of the example I've just given you. It really is about a collaboration. It really is appropriate for you to ask the right questions. And that kind of work, and I mean that like, you know, we're working now, we're playing now, we're trying to get this and come up with a solution for the dynamics of this particular character or the dynamics of where we want to take this play. Those are all really great um, inspirational types of things that the actor, instead of feeling put upon, should actually embrace. So that's what I want to talk about. And that's what I'm talking about, is to embrace those moments, embrace those situations that sometimes can confront us in a negative way. And that, to me, is an indication about your own insecurity rather than, no, 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 this is a creative collaboration. This is the creative team coming up with a way to make this work. So when an adjustment happens in an audition, Embrace it. Make it part of the process. The challenge that I think a lot of talent has is that they work so hard in the preparation of that audition that sometimes they're not as willing to open up to other suggestions. And that's the blessing and the curse of being an actor. On one hand, you've got to come in and have all kinds of really strong choices. But on the other hand, you have to be malleable, ooh, good word, malleable enough to show us that this is, in fact, another way that you can play it. So that's the audition. Uh, one more side note about auditioning, which I want to bring up, and that is sometimes actors will come in to the audition and they just ask a question because the director says to them, uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> the director's trying to be nice. He's saying, do you have anything that we can talk about before we get going? It's kind of a little bit of a nice breaker, more than it is an actual, let's analyze this before I see what you can do. So think about that. 
the director is simply being nice now here's the thing if you really have a legitimate question by all means by all means you have to ask it especially if it can make a difference in your work so you must ask it I have not seen directors get turned off or upset by an actor asking a question unless there's a sense that they're just asking a question for more face time that they're just asking a question in order to show that they're intelligent or some other agenda by asking the question don't do that by all means if there is a question ask it a really great choice might be you know what I've, I've worked on the scene and I have a really good idea about what might be might work here so let, let's try that and then if you have an adjustment for me let's let's play now that's a really great way and shows a great attitude in the audition room so that's the audition that's the audition adjustment now let's talk about rehearsal you know I can think about some of the acting projects that I was involved in um, lots of regional theater work and in, it was really primarily in those theater jobs that I really learned an important lesson about getting feedback. And I got the job, so that felt really great. Now I'm in a rehearsal situation. I'm working with other actors. I'm working um, in a creative environment. The director wants to get the best performance out of me that he can. I want to get the best performance out of myself that I can. And so all of that comes together in the rehearsal period. A lot of other things can get into the heads of my talent, of the talent, not my talent, can get into the heads of the talent. And also there are directors out there who also might have a slightly different agenda. So you're not really a hundred percent in an environment that is just totally free and open. I'm afraid that that's just not always the case, although you want it to be. Although you say, you know what, I'm just going to have the great best time and I'm going to work really hard. You know, sometimes there are other elements and other issues that are taking place that you might not be privy to in the um, rehearsal process. But here's something that I think might be of value to you. First of all, really trust that you wouldn't have been hired for the job unless you were right for the job. That's just the most important thing. Second is sometimes the director might try to be, try to push you in an interesting direction or try to stretch you in a way to just to see how far it goes. Sort of a trial and error in the rehearsal period. You know what? That's perfectly acceptable. And so adjustments in the form of notes during a rehearsal period should be met with exactly the same attitude that you have in the audition. And that is, I'm going to try everything that you throw at me because ultimately I want this to feel like a collaboration. But the bottom line is that it's you on stage. It's you doing the work. And so having a discussion or feeling that there's a contrary view or not being 100% in sync with what the director is giving you in terms of notes, that's pretty much par for the course. So be careful about raising your expectations so high that you miss the point of getting good notes. You miss the point of what it is to be a collaborator in this kind of environment. And so that's exactly what happens when you're in rehearsal. So I used to think all the time about getting notes. I would get a note and I would take the note down, write it down. Sure, I would write that note down and then I'd start to think about it and then it would either fit really well. It would fit like right. It seems right. It feels right. And so there it's a good fit. So that note makes perfect sense. And then sometimes there were notes that were like, I not quite sure I understand. I'm not quite sure where you're going with that note. And that's the moment when the perception of how you're receiving and dealing with the note information can get in the way because you might be questioning the director. And you know what? We're all sensitive. And the directors are not 100% always right all of the time. However, they do have a role to play, as do you. 
And so when you're in that kind of a situation and you find there's some kind of a conflict, be really, really careful and be really good to yourself by not, ooh, here's a good word coming up, exacerbating by bringing an emotional level to the work. Keeping it consistent, keeping it professional, uh, keeping it in the in the atmosphere of wanting to work together in a creative way will serve you so well. Plus, that's what rehearsals are for. Rehearsals are for trial and error. Rehearsals are for trying things and seeing if they work or, or abandoning things that you thought would work and then don't. That's exactly what the process is all about. So I guess what I'm saying, if I were to codify all of this into one statement, that one statement would really be, it's the process. It's exactly what should happen. It's exactly what is normal for the rehearsal. So making adjustments is par for the course. Making adjustments is really what's establishing you with good professional habits. I also wanted to say that when I started and I left my BFA training and I started getting professional work, I sort of still treated the directors as if they were the teacher. Now, I'm not sure that that's a terrible thing, but I also want to caution you but the, that the director's job is not to teach you. The director's job is to work with you and come up with their creative vision of how they want to do the project. And that's your responsibility to interpret the author's work, your responsibility to work with the director and the other cast members in order to have an excellent experience. Now, I know I've sort of focused a lot about theater here, but these same things apply to film and television. There's a big difference, however. Film and television is notorious for not giving you very specific direction or, more importantly, not giving you a lot of rehearsal time. Sometimes what you did in the audition is exactly what they want you to do when you're on the set, especially for day player work. That direction doesn't really come unless there is something technical to do, like taking your mark, placement, lighting. Those are the kinds of things that would stop a director from doing it. But many directors, many directors aren't really fantastic at working with actors. There are some, of course. And I don't want to, you know, draw a huge kind of negative statement about that. But in my experience, especially in film and television, what you did in the audition is exactly what they were sold on and what they want to see happen when you do the shot. Something to think about. But having said that, it is still a collaborative effort. It is still working together to make sure you have the best optimum outcome that you can. Now, one other th note about, I was frustrated. Uh, the last Broadway show I did was A Few Good Men, and I was in the original cast and had a fantastic experience with Aaron Sorkin. We did over 500 performances, and it was really a wonderful experience. And Don Scardino was the director, and I was playing Kendrick. And pretty much early on as I was playing Kendrick, uh, Don Scardino, the director, came up to me and he said, you know what, Jeff, I just have to tell you, you do this one moment when you're looking up um, into the sky for some spiritual inspiration, because that the character was sort of involved, kind of a Bible thumper or Southern guy. And he said, and when you look up into the lights and get your idea, he said, that's just a fantastic moment. I really like that. Now understand that actors are always starved for compliments, <laughs> and I'm no different. I love getting a nice compliment. When someone says something nice to me, I really genuinely appreciate it. It really means a lot. And for a long time, I was kind of, I don't know if I would say pissed off or upset, but I was kind of wondering why I wasn't getting more, you know, positive feedback from directors. But now here was Don Scardino giving me really positive feedback, and I thought, Wow, Don, thank you so much. I really, really, that means so much to me. Thank you. Guess what? That moment on stage for the rest of the run of this Broadway show, that moment was never real for me again. <laughs> it's as if I was hearing his note for the rest of the run. And 
as much as I love Don Scardino, that just kind of pissed me off because I could never make that the truthful, interesting, cool moment that it was. So I guess there's a lesson in that. And the lesson here is be careful of what you wish for, because sometimes some kind of positive comment may just do a disservice to your otherwise good acting. Let me know if you really got something out of this today. I'd love to hear back from you. And I look forward to having you come back. Please tell your friends. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget the podcast. It's all called Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. Thanks for listening. Casting Actors Cast is made possible with your support just by listening. Please like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.